Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in, in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb in the same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and internal organs. You shall, not, you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly 
It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. What is your earliest memory? About how old are you in this memory? What event do you recall? And who is in that memory with you? Are they siblings or friends or other family? Is it a game or a celebration or a sorrowful event? Has your memory been helped by some photo or family story that has helped you hold on to that recollection from way back to the beginnings of your memories? This evening, we hear and remember some of the earliest memories of the church. In the church, we call those memories traditions. But those traditions that we're hearing and remembering today really are memories, albeit they're corporate ones. 
They are the stories which were remembered and retold by the disciples who walked with the earthly Jesus. Stories which then were told to the next generation of disciples, and then eventually written down in the Gospels and letters that now make up the New Testament. And specifically, the traditions we are remembering this evening are, as you know, those surrounding the Last Supper. The scripture appointed for today is filled with those corporate memories. We have the story from Exodus of the Passover on which Jesus, or with which Jesus and his friends were celebrating. We hear in the letter to the Corinthians about Jesus' institution of the Eucharist. We hear in the Gospel of John about Jesus washing the feet of his friends and then giving a new commandment to love one another. These are significant traditions that are fundamental to who we are as Christians. And because these are important memories in the life of the church, the phrases and words from these passages feel really familiar. In particular, we know those phrases from the passage in 1 Corinthians because we hear them every week in the Eucharistic prayer. So let's take a look at what Paul has written in his letter to the Corinthians about the Eucharist. Paul indicates that he is quoting tradition with the opening phrase, for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. That is, Paul is telling us that he did not receive these words through revelation, through experience of prayer with God, but rather that the tradition had originated with Jesus and then been handed down through the apostles to him. These verses are the earliest written account of, we have of the institution of the Eucharist, since Paul's letter was written more than a decade before any of the Gospels. Now, why did Paul retell this tradition in his letter to the Corinthians? The passage we heard shows only that tradition, only those words of institution. What was Paul's purpose in reminding the Corinthians about Jesus' institution of the Eucharist? We need to look at the broader context of this passage to find out. In the section of the letter to the Corinthians of which this passage is a part, Paul is responding to issues concerning how the Corinthians practiced the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. He is troubled by their treatment of one another during the rite. The details about what exactly were happening are few, yet it is clear in the verses that immediately precede what we heard tonight that Paul is exasperated with the Corinthian church members. To understand Paul's concerns, though, it helps to know that for first century Christians, the Lord's Supper was not a separate liturgical rite as it is now. Instead, the sharing of the bread and the cup occurred as part of a communal meal, with all the members of a congregation gathering in one person's home. Paul writes in his letter that during these meals, some members of the Corinthian congregation became drunk, while others went hungry. So it appears that there were members of the church who were able to arrive early. Perhaps they were wealthy and didn't have to finish work. And so they could eat and drink all the provisions they had brought before the other members of the congregation had a chance to arrive. Some of them ate and drank to excess and left very little for those who arrived later. And those late arrivals, therefore, had to leave the meal hungry. Paul tells the church in Corinth in no uncertain terms that with these behaviors, their meal is not the Lord's Supper. Their selfish and individualistic behaviors obscured the meaning of the Lord's Supper so that it no longer pointed to Jesus' death and sacrifice. Paul then uses that tradition of Jesus' institution to remind the Corinthians and reorient them to the understanding of what the ritual actually means. The abuses in the worship of the Corinthians go against Paul's deep understanding that the life of faith is a life of community. The Eucharist is a sacrament that brings us closer to God and ties us to one another. 
the Corinthians' disregard for the needs of the others in their community tore the communal fabric instead of strengthening it, as should happen during the Eucharist. So there is a connection between our worship in the Eucharist and our treatment of one another. In the Eucharist, we consume the body of Christ as we eat that morsel of bread. We are nourished to become more Christ-like. And at the same time, we communally are the body of Christ. That bread we partake and the living community of faith in which we are a part are both Christ's body. And we therefore need to treat both with reverence. And while for most of us it is very straightforward to treat the Eucharistic sacrament with honor and reverence, I think it's often more difficult to remember to always do the same with our fellow Christians. Do we remember at all times and all places to consider and treat our fellow Christians as members of the body of Christ, as a sacred body? Do we offer them the same respect as we do with the sacrament of the altar? Our division sadly suggests that we do not always remember this. And more than that, do we offer this same respect to those we meet in the world? Jesus tells us that when we feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the sick and those in prison, we do it to him. Now, these are not necessarily easy questions to answer. There are times when we can answer in the affirmative that we respect others and that we are part of the building of God's community and the breaking down of the barriers between us. Yet, because we are limited, broken, and human, there are many times, additionally, when we do not, when we tear the fabric of community. And in those times when we erect barriers and divisions within our communities, all is not lost. We can yet again turn to God and turn to the nourishment of Christ's body and blood that we receive each week at this altar. Former presiding Bishop Frank Griswold once said, at its heart, the Eucharist is an encounter with the risen Christ. And so we pray that our encounter with Christ in the Eucharist may give us a deeper capacity of love for one another and the courage to break down the walls that separate us one from another. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. On this day of remembrance, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Hear our prayer. 
We pray for the church that even as we are separate from one another, we may be drawn together in our remembrance of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks that Jesus loved his disciples to the end, and we pray for the grace to keep his new commandment of love. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the nations and people of the earth, that there may be deliverance from oppression and terror and an end to the shedding of innocent blood. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who selflessly serve in these difficult days, that the one who was servant of all will preserve and keep them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the weary, the sick, the suffering, and the dying, that Christ's presence may strengthen and restore them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have died, that they may feast forever at the table in God's heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Christ our Lord, who loves us and washed us in his own blood and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory in the church evermore. Through him, let us offer continually the sacrifice of praise, which is our bounden duty and service, and with faith in him boldly come before the throne of grace and humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Good evening and welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church on this Monday, Thursday observance. Uh, the service will continue very similar to a Sunday morning 11 o'clock Eucharist, and at the end is a very dramatic stripping of the altar, that is removing and or covering everything up at the high altar uh, to be ready for Good Friday, the day we observe uh, our Lord's death. The service tomorrow, for Good Friday, will be at noon at 7.30 p.m. with Deacon Jeffrey Royce preaching. And then the great Easter vigil is at 8 o'clock, and our McNulty intern, uh, Deanna Briotti, is preaching. And then on Easter day at 8, 9, and 11 is our celebration of the Eucharist for Easter. Uh, I'll be preaching at those, and there's also, if interested and age appropriate, there's an Easter egg hunt at 10 a.m. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, and offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.